My name is Andrea Cook. Um, my native name is De Ganonge, which translates, um, it's something that's scarce, it's not abundant. I um, am of the Anadaga Nation Deer Clan, and my father is of the Seneca Nation, which is the territory I reside in. And I have seven children, and five boys and two girls uh, will be uh, from the matrilineal line, so they, that means they're Anadaga Deer Clan. So my two daughters are um, helping to populate the Onondaga Nation. I have one grandson who we now realized um, is one of the last not deer clan to be a title holder. I was also put up as a title holder traditionally within our nation. Uh, Onondaga Nation functions as a sovereign traditional government with chiefs and clan mothers. Um, and my father met my mother in boarding school and we were raised on Cattaraugus territory, 30 miles south of Buffalo. So juggling a traditional government, being raised in an elective government is something to know when you're young but not knowing was something to grow up with. So my children now um, are in their 30s, my youngest is 18. They are understanding the importance of the matrilineal society. We are understanding my five boys are um, have taken some uh, women from the Seneca Territory and from the Six Nations Territory up in Canada. So their responsibility responsibility as a title holder themselves is very important and it's really come to light at this point in our time as opposed to when we were young. We, we function within the traditional government at Onondaga Nation as chiefs and clan mothers. So the clan mothers are the overseers of the men and they select the titles. They select the men that will take those titles um, in, agree in, in agreement with their clan. And so these titles that have been going on since the beginning of our time um, is still carried on and so we're juggling those two worlds within the Onondaga Nation. Being raised on the Seneca territory with an elective government and understanding that as a young person um, with the elective system of president and treasurer and clerk um, doesn't come to light in a young person's life. So it isn't until I become older to realize the importance of both and understanding them. Well, as a clan mother, I was young, trying to learn the roles and responsibilities and raising uh, five children. And as time went on, I learned a great deal about the ceremonial aspect and the language. I became a language teacher, a lay language teacher, um, on the Onondaga Nation School, kindergarten through eighth. And then there was a time when the state decided that you can't just be um, a temporary certified by paying a small fee to be a, a language teacher. So it was getting, you know, difficult, and the hint was for you to go and get an education. And I was in this. I guess if I can honestly say an ignorant stage of, I don't need to have a non-native person teach me my language or teach me how to teach the language. And when I went to my very first training, the presenter lady, the, pre the lady that presented, I remember her name to this day, Susan Kohler, and watched her present about childhood development. And I had had five children and I'm like, wow, this surely would have helped me before I had my children. but. Hindsight's there, and as I started taking the courses, I started to really enjoy the new things I was learning and the ignorance that I was turning over a new leaf of understanding. And truthfully, as a Native American, wondering if it was something for Native American to do, because you sort of feel you're taken away from your culture. I spent many nights where I'm rushing out of the daycare, and my sister used to say, We'd see you come and go, and you had your book bags, and, and they helped me with my kids. They would help me raise my kids, and they would take them and things like that. So 
Unfortunately, there was this program that New York State devised called NAPD, Native American Professional Development. And through that research that came from there, they realized that Native American students learn better from Native American teachers. So I created a curriculum for my final project um, encompassing, um, it was creative curriculum that had start mandates for, student, for, the, for the teachers to use for the educational general ed classroom. And then I implemented the Thanksgiving address, which is our, our way of giving thanks to all the natural elements. And so um, implementing that and Seneca language along the way to combine to make a cohesive uh, learning environment. So I was really excited about that and I graduated in 2004. At, at the elementary level, I got to teach um, Somalian children and I got to learn and understand who I was by working with them and seeing the closeness and this issue of not a, it's not an issue, but this concept of family, I seen it play right out in front of me. Um, so we had Somalian children that were in my classroom, but boy, this one looked really small, you know, and I thought, gee, she, she, maybe it was a premature baby or something. But when I checked with the uh, director and she said, those are siblings and they stay together. And when they would turn paperwork in and I was, I was teaching them like the Thanksgiving address. And I was telling them about the trees and they're the, you know, the leader is the maple tree and you know, and he gives us sap and we're really thankful. And so they would draw their pictures and it's like, now these pictures look very similar, you know, from these two children, you know, and come to find out as we watched and, and thought they would work together, but she would do her older, her younger siblings work because that's how much they survived and that's what they needed. And that's when I started realizing the importance. I mean, I, I, I mean, I always knew it, but I seen it happen with other minorities and also had Hispanics and Latinos and trying to juggle all of that was really difficult to understand that. But to know that there are people on earth that don't know who I am was also a awakening. Thinking that I'm in my little corner in Haudenosaunee world, understanding and knowing who I am, but not many people know who you are. And so they were um, excited to learn things about who I was, so that was exciting. And at the high school level, to have a 15 or 16 year old come over and not have any English, it was amazing to see a young person trying to struggle with who they are. And it was really um, a, a, a exciting um, program to be a part of and I'm, I think it also started to make me change and grow as I grew older and at that time I was about 47 because I started when I was 35 and I finished my master's at 47. So through the struggle of going to school and being the last person at the um, library in the um, computer room, because I didn't have a computer at home, doing the work and then rushing out and grabbing what I could, you know, or leaving something. Many times it was ramen noodles, you know, or box cereal. And my sister, you know, would take care of the kids. And then they got older to help take care of themselves. Um, now being where I'm at and now that when we have family gatherings and we talk about my educational um, journey, they are very proud. They know that it was a struggle. They encourage it to their children. They're very good with their, with their children. I have my oldest grandchild is um, nine or 10 in fifth or sixth grade. And, and my son is trying to bridge that gap that the culture Ceremonies, language is just as important as your education. That big issue of balancing two worlds is the hardest thing to explain to many people that don't have two worlds, I guess, but I think many people have two worlds, even if you have family and education. I, for one, did not want to be educated. I wanted to stay in my world, my comfort world, my ceremonial world, my language world, but through the travel, through education, it allowed me to learn more of my language. It allowed me to meet people that had the resources or the understanding of how a language works. Um, it, it, it allowed me to see our history in a different manner that I haven't seen from sitting in a longhouse, sitting in sacred ceremonies that make you feel well, that feel that spiritual peace. There are all Six Nation linguists 
that support those six languages that are now working within the native nations and lots of material has been created, which is hard for our concept because we're an oral tradition. Very hard to accept. The numbers that are decreasing of fluent speakers in all the six nations is shocking. Um, we're under 25. Um, in some places, under 10 in other nations. So we don't really have the time to argue about who's in charge, who knows more. And to keep, that, to keep the philosophies that were handed down from our spirituality, it's so simple. But for some reason, the conflict comes in from the education world that we think we have these concepts that we took from them that make make it difficult to know the right way to be. And the foundation that is in our, in our, in our cultural and spirituality realm is compassion, helpfulness, taking care of each other, um, that love. You know, we have all these words, a deni hat, a genuine yachts hat, which is the respectful, respectful manner to each other. Um, but it has helped me learn to walk in both worlds, which was something I didn't want to see. And it was the people that I met from the first instructor to being able to travel all over. And I was very fortunate at the school district prior to this one to travel to Europe, to Ireland, France, and England through the Spanish club. And that was another piece for my spirituality because they tell us not to travel across the big water. Um, but I did because I was curious. And, you know, our, our spirituality tells us we need to stay grounded. But I gained more respect for my spirituality by going over and seeing the beginnings of other people's spirituality and standing in other people's houses that where this spirituality began um, and seeing and then seeing the part of history of different people and how they interact and then seeing that even though I walked over there and thought I was this I'm a native indigenous person from over here and they didn't see me as that they see me as American as soon as I opened my, my mouth and spoke and I realized that I'm just a small piece on this as ironically as I did that visit to one of the clan mothers that was my mentors as I was growing with my children. But she, they would say these things that stick to me. We're just this little piece. We're just down here on earth, just a little bit. And then we're gone. She goes, and what are you going to do with your time? She goes, we're just here, just a short piece of a time. And our ancestors, you know, are there waiting for us. And the new babies are coming and things like that. And you don't get to put those in perspective, of course, until after they pass. Um, but I think you make your path based on the knowledge you have at that time. And if I could share with anyone, and I think to my children, it's like, you need to learn more. You need more knowledge. And you need to go and you need to listen. You need to really listen because those things will all come back and help guide you where you are because you only make the decisions with the knowledge you have. And if you have small knowledge, your decisions are going to be based on, you know, not a lot of insight, insight from our elders. And when you, as you become older, I'm 58 now, as you become older, you realize everything that your elders said is absolutely true. We don't believe it as a young person. And, you know, as my kids grow, you know, and I, and I see them and I see me and them as I was to my mother, you realize that this is just the way life is. And, and the more that you sit back and relax and not get stressed out, and between those two worlds, how do you balance? I think you take the best, best, excuse me, the best from both to balance. But knowing what you take is the hardest thing because you don't, you don't know what is, you know, you have to, you have to try it. You have to try them. And if you're scared. You can't be scared. You got to be a survivor. And we are survivors because we're all here, all indigenous people and people in general. We're all here 
and our ancestors behind us worked so hard for us to be here. We shouldn't take it lightly.